So we're trying to, to um, explain to you how to capture emerging diseases of wildlife. Uh, and this is a, a, a collaboration between uh, Wildlife Health Australia and uh, the University uh, of Adelaide at the School of Animal and Veterinary Sciences uh, looking into specifically wildlife disease surveillance. So, well, I'll just give you some background, and it's really important if you're interested in wildlife, particularly, um, what, sorry, wildlife health, to understand and know about the Wildlife Health Australia. So there's its website if you want to go and have a look at that. But it's involved in managing um, wildlife disease surveillance in Australia. They're based in Sydney, uh, been working for many, many years, uh, trying to develop a, a strong uh, Commonwealth supportive uh, initiative. Uh, Simon. It ensures that um, the, um, all this data that is collected, that we're talking about, is it can be used to inform decision making and policy development and I think it'd be one of those sort of things that the Wildlife Health Australia would like to do, be able to collate a lot of that uh, data that sits a, and exists in some freezers but, but also in some spreadsheets around the place as well. So they want to collate that data for the management of emergency disease incidents, so that's any emergency disease that might have an effect on domestic animals, human health or the environment and wildlife. It's also important for reporting to the OIE, to the um, World Animal Health Organization based in Paris. We, we have a, uh, a, a reporting um, responsibility to provide information. Uh, and it's also important to protect uh, Australia's trade uh, uh, and also human health and, and particularly livestock health and biodiversity. So I picked up the wrong... Um, uh, link there. They were, used to be called Australian Wildlife Health Network, but now they call Wildlife Health Australia, so I, I, I've got this uh, old um, uh, uh, interface there for the website. But there, it's basically the same except Wildlife Health Network is changed up here. But um, they, uh, this is their website, and they provide an awful lot of information on disease surveillance. Uh, bat uh, disease uh, information, uh, diseases on hendrovirus, and they have produce a whole bunch of um, uh, fact sheets on diseases, of particular, or in particular diseases that you might see in Australia, which is a really incredibly good, valuable resource. Um, so their, their aim is to try and uh, protect and enhance the natural environment. And, and they want to try and do this through participating in research with, with people out there. Uh, like ourselves at the university, um, uh, investigating and monitoring and doing surveillance of diseases um, and, and looking and recording what disease, wildlife disease offence are occurring in Australia. So they're kind of repository for all this data and information, not necessarily the samples. But, and they want to do this in support of um, being prepared for any major diseases that m might break out and how to respond to that in a timely fashion. Uh, they have, they collect and hold wildlife health information uh, data sets. Uh, they're in, involved in any sort of specific wildlife health intelligence and what might be required for dis decision making in Australia. Um, and, and it's also part of the Department of Agriculture's um, understanding of how wildlife diseases might have an effect on um, some trade that might go, in, uh, go on be between Australia and overseas and, and might affect people and, and animals as well. Uh, they, they want to try and um, help um, through education uh, and certainly they, we have a, a thing called the Wildlife Digest that comes out once a week which gives a, an overall summary of all, all sort of wildlife disease events that are occurring in Australia and overseas that might be r related to Australia. Uh, and they do training, uh, uh, or so they, they undertake training uh, opportunities, looking at preparing veterinarians to understand if there's going to be disease outbreaks and so on, and what, what would the best thing to do. Uh, just recently, uh, they've been involved in trying to, uh, well, uh, supporting uh, an opportunity to look at a, a disease called uh, white nose syndrome, which is uh, a disease that's causing a de devastating effect in uh, America, USA and Canada has now just reached the western parts of, uh, of the United States and it's a disease, a fungal disease that is transmitted by cave dwelling 
bats normally during periods of torpor. And so they um, have asked for support uh, to look at doing a risk assessment to see whether that would be an issue in Australia. If it were to get here, what would happen? And so they're involved in, in looking after the ecosystems in Australia, and they develop this, have developed this real, really good network between uh, universities uh, and zoos, um, veterinary practices, wildlife care groups, and a bunch of different people that are involved in wildlife to try to work out if there's any diseases that are emerging. One of the things that they have done is develop this uh, a zoo-based wildlife disease surveillance program, uh, and that was in uh, connection with the Zoos and Aquarium Association to look at uh, develop, uh, look at uh, uh, getting information from wildlife cases that might come into zoos. Uh, and that would help to um, look at the disease surveillance that's occurring uh, or contribute to the disease surveillance that's occurring in the country and it adds a component. So with zoo clinics, we tended to see quite a lot of uh, animals um, that come through that are wildlife cases and they developed a 12-month project originally and that was supported um, for participation by these zoos. And that's had a lot of zoos that have been involved in it and it's been a, a very successful and a lot of these zoos actually see uh, you know, 17,000 free-ranging wildlife each year so if there's any specific diseases that might be uh, occurring then it gives a, 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 a great amount of information from these cases and so we have this opportunity to report to um, Wildlife Health Australia uh, to to tell them what we are finding in the zoo situation with wildlife coming into clinics. And, and Karen wrote a paper looking at this um, while uh, emerging, infection, emerging infectious diseases in free ranging wildlife um, and how that's contributing to, to the national surveillance. It's been seen as a, an excellent project and now has been uh, going to be developed uh, into other areas as well which I'm going to come to but all that data is collected from these cases is put into a wildlife health work uh, information system called EWIS and that collects all this data so now we've got this university based wildlife disease surveillance program of which the University of Adelaide is, is participating in so it's a very similar sort of thing to the zoo based program uh, and it pre previously we've had uh, discussion groups that talk about some of the diseases that have been seen um, around the university people, what the research they've been doing over those years. But now this has been extended to looking at uh, trying to increase the surveillance from w the pathology clinics or the wildlife clinics that might be occurring at some of the uh, vet schools, particularly around uh, Australia. So we had a meeting in, two in 2015 and we looked at what, what, where there might be a, an opportunity to contribute and it was clear that there was a great opportunity for us to provide information on what was occurring in uh, some of the wildlife cases we, we've been seeing. And so we're now part of a one-year proof of concept pilot program and hopefully um, we will demonstrate how useful this is. This is funded by the Department of the Commonwealth through the Department of Agriculture and it's seen as a a really uh, useful um, system of trying to gather information on diseases that might be emerging. And so, thankfully, and uh, it's really good to be part of it, the vet school at Rosalie is in involved uh, with some of the vet schools within uh, Australia. So we, we've seen, uh, as Tash has alluded to, we've seen a few cases of, of tuberculosis and we've seen mange that's occurred in uh, koalas uh, in this area, and that's been a, a newly emerging uh, issue. And this is a, a, a common wombat from the southeast. People contact me and send photographs of diseases that they see. So it's a great opportunity to gather all this sort of information. Uh, th and this g just gives you an overview of, of some of the um, beak and feather disease, uh, which is a has a threat abatement plan associated with it. So it's a disease that occurs in a variety of different cockatoos, ravens, uh, uh, pigeons, and even some passerines as well. Uh, and this is give, giving an indication of 
uh, some of the information that's been gathered by Wildlife Health Australia looking at the, the frequency uh, or observations of uh, the beak and feather disease that's occurring. So what we're interested in through the vet school at, uh, at Rosewithy is trying to gather as much information on uh, the, any emerging diseases that are occurring. So we have some eligibility criteria uh, that we would like people um, to, to consider. Um, we, we, from our perspective, we have a bit of money that, we want to, that has been given to us to try and look at the, some of the diseases that might be occurring in South Australia. We, we notifiable diseases, yeah, that's one of the uh, uh, eligible diseases. We're not likely to see that, hopefully, because we have pretty good biosecurity. But if we do have outbreaks of, of bat viral diseases, then they want to know about it. Any mass mortalities, we, we would like to know about any mass mortalities that might occur in wildlife in South Australia. Uh, and that means at least three dead in a particular space and time uh, that w we would be interested in investigating that. Uh, any arboviruses, so any vi diseases that where there may be a suggestion that um, uh, insects are playing a part in transmitting some of these uh, viruses, salmonella cases. But we've also got this more catch-all opportunity where we can look at any interesting and, and unusual cases and try and uh, work out from that if, if it is of significance. So if there are specific clusters or patterns of disease, or any unexpected mortalities that weren't expected at all, um, or there may be mor morbidities as well as mortalities. Um, and even if some of those diseases might be likely to spread uh, and might be difficult to eradicate, um, if they become established, then uh, we want to know about it. Any toxic events or pesticide events might be a, a problem as well. And then yeah, any, if there's any suspicions that there might be potential uh, linkages to any diseases that might be occurring overseas. Uh, and if we have any e e undiagnosed syndromes and some key threatening process diseases like chytridiomycosis or beak and feather disease. So we'd like to know if you see any more, any cases uh, that are occurring. Um, and strandings is another a case we talked about before that where that might be in the eligibility criteria. So uh, it's not likely that you're going to see much too many strandings yourself and we're probably going to know more about it um, through the news than anything else but, but we're happy to know um, if you see any specific cases it's a great opportunity um, for us to participate in this national wildlife disease surveillance uh, project uh, and uh, we want to we have some money to look at cases uh, for free uh, that would be really quite useful and they follow those eligibility criteria then that would be excellent. Thanks very much. Wayne, uh, time for one or two questions. Tony. Sure. Hi. Wayne, through that you also have uh, able to look at parasites and have wildlife health by and the sea level. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, sure. So, we want to see if there's any emerging, like we might be that the disease is something that's been uh, noted before, but we want to see if there's any unusual, any unusual events that are occurring, any, so if there's any specific uh, parasite, parasitic diseases that might be causing a cluster of disease at any particular time, we yeah, are very interested to, to find out about that, yeah, for sure. For sure, if it's having an effect on biodiversity, for sure, for sure, yeah. Hi, Renata. Yeah, hi. Um, sure, sure. So, so it, it, it still that still links that so that that we still have, and maybe I should have alluded to that the wildlife health coordinator within South Australia um, and so that's through PERSA and through you Renata at uh, Duna so if there's any of those sort of cases that do occur then uh, certainly um, you um, will get to know about them but it's we have now the opportunity to do some work up and diagnose for free basically which is which is a great opportunity so we've got this opportunity of the 2016 if it kicks off then we hopefully get more support in the future.
Uh, Wildlife Health Australia at the moment. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mark. Thank you.